American writer Robert Monroe, 1915-1995, gained popularity after writing a book about an out-of-body experience in which he encountered reptiles. In 1958, Robert Monroe, a 43-year-old radio engineer from the United States, experienced a series of unusual accidents. First, he felt a powerful vibration deep in his chest. At some point, this feeling became so strong that he had to lie down. He felt himself floating out of his body. It's worth noting that up to this point, he was a fairly rational thinker. He believed in science and was categorically against magic and devilry. Monroe immediately panicked, believing himself dead. But the debilitating horror returned the writer to physical form, and that was just the beginning. The other occasions where he left his body and floated weightlessly around the room were identical. Monroe visited various doctors and psychologists, trying to make sure of his health. But every medical worker came to the conclusion that he was all right. Monroe decided to hone his newly discovered out-of-body abilities, elated at his positive diagnosis. He became so engrossed in the subject that he abandoned a secure business career and devoted his life to the study of consciousness. Discovery of Hemispheric Synchronization Over the next three decades, Robert Monroe carefully analyzed out-of-body experiences. The main goal of his research was to collect scientific data proving the existence of an alternate reality. In the hopes of making interdimensional travel more accessible, he developed a technology called hemi-synchronization. This system, known as hemi-sync, uses sound patterns containing binaural beats, that is, three-dimensional sound waves, to harmonize the work of the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Further, at his request, some independent clinical neurologists conducted extensive testing of volunteers using this experimental technique. To their surprise, the results were clearly visible on every EEG electroencephalogram they took. Monroe's work paved the way for tangible, altered states. The Monroe Institute was founded in 1974 and continues to this day. Monroe has developed a range of audio stimulation techniques designed to improve focus, relieve stress, improve sleep, and more. A Portal to Another World The U.S. government paid special attention to Monroe's groundbreaking activities, and in 1978, he was visited by the CIA. High-ranking officials invited him to join a highly classified military project. They sought the use of his mind-expanding practice to improve the mind control of soldiers during wartime. This would give a significant advantage over opponents, like the USSR at the time. Robert Monroe agreed to collaborate with them to increase his authority in the study of out-of-body experiences and other paranormal phenomena. Since the participants in the experiments had to open, quote, portals to other dimensions during the sessions, the researchers have aptly named this work the gate process or opening the gate. The declassified files indicate that the program was, quote, a training system aimed at increasing the strength, concentration, and coherence of the amplitude and frequency of brain waves between the right and left hemispheres to change consciousness, allowing it to go beyond the physical world and eventually transcend even time and space, end quote. Subsequently, the participant gained access to various levels of intuitive understanding of the universe. Commander Wayne M. McDonald's latest research details the discoveries he made about the nature of our world. Researchers have shown that people live in a holographic reality and that our life in the waking state is a projection of the electromagnetic matrix. Robert Monroe's encounters with the reptilians to explore unearthly regions, the participants sat in an isolated dark room. They put on headphones and listened to different sound tones at certain frequencies. Participants did not attempt to contact or connect with each other. After completing their astral journey, the volunteers told the staff about their experiences. According to Robert Monroe, the subjects often encountered creatures from other dimensions. The most common humanoids were reptiles, 
and because of their toothy crocodile faces, the participants dubbed these supernatural creatures alligators. It is strange that at that time Monroe was already familiar with reptiles. He had witnessed similar lizard-like creatures during his many out-of-body adventures. Monroe and his team have been collecting data on these incredible creatures for over 35 years and have found the following. 1. These vile lizards have controlled and enslaved humanity for millennia. 2. They operate and exist in the fourth dimension and are only visible to those people who can see beyond our extremely limited spectrum of visible light. 3. The reptilians feed on our spiritual life force, which Monroe called lush. 4. Negative and low vibrational energy is essential for their survival. 5. These parasitic creatures see the Earth as a huge farm, where they can collect human fear, hatred, anxiety, anger, and depression, and feed on it. Number 6. Their intelligence equals or exceeds that of a human. Number 7. This elusive reptilian race sees itself as the true and supreme ruler of humanity. Conclusion Robert Monroe spent the rest of his days doing research on out-of-body experiences until his death in 1995. His convictions remained unchanged throughout the investigation. He often warned others that the reptilians controlled and fed on humans. He was certain of the presence of malevolent energy predators among us. Throughout the 1980s, breakthrough testing was carried out as part of the Open Gate Project, the result of which were hundreds of successful, quote, flights to other worlds. Separate documents relating to this endeavor were made public in 2003, but it attracted surprisingly little public attention. And according to some insiders, this experiment was classified and continues in one form or another to this day. There is a group that has sinister intentions for Earth lurking in the shadows of our society. They come from another world and are rumored to interfere with mankind's existence, perhaps changing our ancestors' genetic code. These mysterious beings are linked with almost every theory of conspiracy, and it is rumored that our societies have been infiltrated at the highest levels of business and government. But who is that, and where is it from? Who are the reptilians? Reptilians are a supposed alien species that came to Earth during the time of the ancient Sumerians. In fact, much of what we know of them is documented through Sumerian writings. What we do know is that at some point during the Sumerian reign, the Anuna, which translates to gods, came from the sky and settled on the Earth. These gods were then referred to as Anunnaki, gods who live on Earth. Many people associate the reptilians with the strange arrival of the Anunnaki because of the sudden emergence of reptile worship after the Anunnaki were settled. There are several arguments that claim the Sumerian writings are not enough evidence to link the reptilians to these strange Anunnaki. What cannot be denied, however, is the many reptilian theories that have come to light as a result of the Sumerian writings. There are two theories as to where the reptilians came from. Some believe that the reptilians evolved on Earth millions of years ago until they were able to venture into space. Their reappearance during the age of the Sumerians was simply a decision to return to Earth, not the takeover of a new world. Others believe the reptilians came to us from the Draco constellation and then traveled throughout the galaxy before they discovered Earth. They then assimilated into Earth's government and helped to propel the ancient world into an age of enlightenment. Some of these reptilians bred with humans and created crossbred offspring that are supposedly responsible for feats such as the ancient pyramids in Egypt. Theorists would tell us that the reptilians are a humanoid species that appear to be human from the feet to the neck but have a face that resembles a reptile. They tend to be much taller than the average human, and at least during the point in time, and have knowledge which is thought to have helped in shaping the ancient world. In fact, some theorists claim that they were responsible for helping to create the major religions that came out of the Middle East such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So what do these strange creatures want? supposedly to enslave the human race. 
And really, what better group could there be to blame all of the world's conspiracies on than the first alien settlers to make contact with our ancestors? There are many different variations on how these reptilians may have set out to enslave the human race. According to some theorists, the Anunnaki accomplished this by genetically modifying the DNA of primates to make them more suitable servants. Others will argue that the reptilians simply modified a short segment of human DNA to make our forefathers more submissive. There are some variations of this theory that claim that humans can only play a small part of their brain capacity because of how the reptilians altered our brain structure. Many who believe this theory point to the reptile genes that can be found in our brains and are responsible for a large portion of our brain activity. According to Sumerian writings, the supposed plot was foiled by a character named Enki, a god that came to Earth from a different place than the Anunnaki. He freed certain humans from slavery by telling them a secret, though we are no longer certain as to what that secret may be. Apparently, Enki's tactics didn't pan out for the long run, because many believe the reptilians are still alive and well. In fact, there are some that believe the reptilians compromised the majority of the world's governments and businesses. Popular reptilian candidates include Queen Elizabeth II and George W. Bush. Reptilian leaders like to supposedly keep the humans of the world in check by poisoning their food and distracting them with politics and war. The most popular belief among all reptilian theorists is that the strange alien group hopes to unite the countries of the world with a new world order that will give them complete control of our societies once and for all. Physical Appearance Not surprisingly, there are relatively few descriptions to go off of as to what the reptilians actually look like. These are supposedly at least two orders of reptilians, the winged draconians and the reptoids. The draconians are an albino reptile species with wings. They are the highest in the reptilian hierarchy. The reptoids are next in the pecking order. They lack wings and have scaly skin that is sort of to a brownish hue. The reptoids compromise the soldiers and scientists of the reptilians. These reptilians can range anywhere from 5 to 12 feet in height. Draconians tend to be taller than the reptoids and have scaly skin, reptile-like eyes, and uncommonly strong. They do not wear a human chill to blend into society, but instead use vibrations to alter the way they are perceived by humans. Hybrids. There are supposedly hybrids that exist in human form that are not aware they are reptilians. These hybrids are controlled by the reptilians, existing in the fourth dimension, and are used to further the new world order. These hybrids have existed as some of the world's greatest leaders and have performed some of the most amazing and terrifying acts in history. So how do you spot these reptilians and hybrids? Most believers will tell you that the most common way to catch a reptilian in action is to watch for what most people simply see as camera glitches. Most reptilians will be Caucasian or have light skin. They also tend to have green, hazel, or blue eyes that can sometimes change in color. Many reptilians have some sort of scar or other defining feature on their faces to make them stand out. Theorists believe that this may be an attempt to cover up their roughness of their skin. To catch a reptilian, monitor their appearance in photos and videos. Believers claim you can easily spot the difference in a human and a reptilian or a reptilian hybrid by watching for several key clues. One of the most popular or common for most people is to see the appearance of red eyes in images. This is fairly common for people who take pictures on low gate cameras, but will supposedly happen frequently if you encounter a reptilian. There are also sometimes changes in the appearance of the eyes of reptilians when they are being filmed. Other changes include subtle scaly skin and slight blue-green tints to their skin. Reptilians and their hybrid kin are usually void of empathy, or at the very least have extreme difficulty trying to feel or express emotion. They will typically be unsympathetic to the troubles and suffering of those around them. They also tend to have a need for power that drives them. Reptilians are extremely intelligent. They have a deep thirst for knowledge that drives them, especially when it comes to space and science. Many believers also claim that reptilians are constantly working to create chaos and destruction in the world around us. This is usually accompanied by the claim that reptilians feed off of negative energy and it is necessary for them to sustain their way of life. 
Others simply believe that reptilians crave control and will do anything to maintain their grip on society. Popular Conspiracy Theories Paul Benowitz Among all of the UFO conspiracy theories that exist in the world today, few are as recognizable as Paul Benowitz's supposed discovery of an underground UFO base located in Dulce, New Mexico. Benowitz started off as a highly respected physicist that happened across secret projects being conducted by the Air Force and the NSA at Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico. He believed these projects were somehow related to cattle mutilations and local alien abduction stories that were common in the area. His investigations led him to the town of Dulce. There is a base that operates out of there. It is said to serve as the base of operations for a group of unfriendly extraterrestrials who use the seventh level of the base to conduct genetic engineering experiments. These extraterrestrials are commonly identified as the reptilians. Benowitz took his claims to the UFO community where they quickly spread and were accepted by many believers. However, there are also those who do not accept his claims as truth because of his quick descent into madness and admitted interference with military and government agents of misinformation. In spite of all of this, there are still many who believe Benowitz's theories to this day. In fact, a former security officer at the Dulce base, Thomas Costello, confirmed that the base does have seven levels. According to Costello, the seventh level consists of natural caverns that he believes used to be frequented by several extraterrestrial races in the past. David Icke When it comes to the reptilians, most of today's theories come from the now infamous David Icke. Icke was originally a pro football player, also known as soccer in North America, but had to retire due to arthritis. For a while, he was content with serving as a sports broadcaster and representative of the Green Party, but soon descended into madness when a psychic told him that he had a special purpose on Earth and would soon receive a message from the spirit world. Ike soon wanted to be known as the son of the Godhead and was convinced the world was being run by a group of Babylonian Brotherhood reptilians who used shape-shifting to allow themselves to blend into society as prominent figures and leaders. The goal of this Brotherhood is to create a new world order that will give them complete control over the free world. Many who believe in reptilians today have had their views heavily impacted by Ike and his teachings. There are those who debate over Ike's methods. Some believe he is simply a conspiracist gone mad, while others believe his theories are simply encouragement for non-intellectuals to question the state of the world today and a lens to help them examine events more closely. Regardless of what Ike's goals are and what his state of sanity is, he is and always will be one of the pioneering voices in the reptilian conspiracy. Herbert Shermer. Last but not least, we cannot forget the infamous account of Herbert Shermer encountering a UFO on the side of the road in Ashland, Nebraska. At first, all Shermer could remember was his encounter with a strange craft hovering above the side of the road. Later on, however, he agreed to undergo hypnosis to uncover hidden memories that had been quote-unquote lost. He recalled being escorted onto the spacecraft and interacting with beings who looked just like humans but were dressed in a gray and white uniform with the picture of a winged serpent on the chest. Conspiracy theorists everywhere were quick to link the account to reptilians and accounted for the human appearances of the entities as being due to the shape-shifting abilities of reptiles. Explanation of the Myth Many who tried to shed light on the introduction of the reptilians as a common conspiracy theory often point to Robert E. Howard. It is Howard's work, Shadow Kingdom, that first introduced the idea of serpent men to literature as rulers of a secret society that controlled the world. The book incorporated the idea that reptilians could have thrived in the lost worlds of Atlantis and Lumeria and been responsible for the great technologies of the ancient worlds. In fact, many of David Icke's theories come from literature by Howard or authors who were inspired by Howard. Others simply point to the Sumerian writings as the cause of the reptilian hysteria. It is undeniable that these writings are a source of inspiration for many, including Howard, and there are many mythologies that believe the writings hold some truth, however small. 
There are also those who simply see the many reptilians that appear in history as hyperboles or imagined creatures to explain the world in a way that made sense to our ancient ancestors.